Good morning, friends. Namaste. So today's pickle pose of the week is, or of the day, is going to be an introduction to pranayama. So in our climb towards self-realization in our in an eight limb path of yoga, we've run through the asanas, which everybody knows, the yoga poses. But sometimes it just gets left to the wayside and people don't go any further. And I think just a brief discussion and maybe a description of the very next climb towards your self-awareness is called pranayama or breath control. And we'll go over a few of those and I'll teach you a handful of them and they'll just be a few extra tools you can put in your spiritual tool belt towards dealing with the inevitable. All right, friends, so just a brief overview of pranayama. Pranayama, first and foremost, is broken down. If you take the Sanskrit word prana, as in breath, life force, yama, as in control or restraint, put them together in pranayama and it just creates a breath control. So what that means is when you start and you develop your yoga practice and as you learn to deepen your practice, you're going to do a few things first. It's going to start with the yamas and niyamas and there's the observances and the constraints of like the everyday being cool, you know, just the Ten Commandments and not being a jerk and uh, that's going to be non-stealing, non-violence, keeping yourself clean, austerity, honesty, truthfulness. And then those things you've done. You've all got them down pat and then you go roll your mat out. And then you practice the asana practice. And us in Western cultures always, 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 always focus so much on the physical part, which is the asana practice of yoga. And we call that yoga, but yoga is way more. Then the very next rung towards your climb in your samadhi journey, and samadhi being self-awareness and bliss, self-realization, you know, that, that very apex of that eight limb path in your yoga journey is pranayama, breath control. So, if you take the breath and it kind of, if you could almost make the metaphor of a vessel, you know, take a vase or whatever and, and it will choose maybe oxygen as, you know, the metaphor for water. Is it puraka? It's the pouring and that's the inhalation, the filling of the ribs with prana and life force of breath. Then there's the kumbhaka and I always make some kind of reference to the third eye here because I feel like it's at the top of the breath. That's a general retention of the breath. It's just a pause and then reshuffle. So that part is just that exhalation of pouring out of that vessel. So you know what's going on now. You've got the elements of the breath. We're going to just talk about some of the benefits. So right now in our Corona COVID chapter, there's tons of stressors, anxiety, all kinds of shit that makes you crazy, you know? And uh, there's so much environmental pressure that we need more tools. We need the ability to control our autonomic and our sympathetic nervous systems. These are the things that govern your heart rate. These are the things that govern your respiration. They are unbelievably influenced by our breath. So when we breathe with intention, <clears throat> excuse me, or practice pranayama, we have the ability to manage stress, anxiety, hypertension, uh, headaches, things like that. Just, it has a wonderful, wonderful benefit in creating a larger capacity to the lungs, and it really, 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 and immensely works the respiratory system therein lies, we have an ability to settle and control our chitta consciousness. When we have that ability to still our minds, we can move on. Now, once we get pranayama down, which should only take, I don't know, a couple of lifetimes, <laughs> but once we do, we pass over the 50 yard line. We're going deep now in our eight limb path. We're getting over it. Now we're gonna to get to those spots that only, only with the fire of pranayama could ever, ever, ever cook the chickpea long enough to be still for dhyana, dharana, turning inward focusing inward, responding to the inward voice, preparing for meditation, and finally, it's bliss, man, samadhi. So let's play. We'll just go over a few things. You know what's going on. There's several, several, there's many different types of pranayama. All right, precautions. Pregnancy, low blood pressure, high blood pressure. There's things you should research, there's things you should discuss with professionals if you feel like this is something. Now, if in fact you have very, very low blood pressure, and you lower it some more, you may feel dizzy. You know, that kind of thing. If you are very pregnant, it might not be a great time for you to practice very aggressive pranayamas, but we have options, there's others. So there's so many we can play with and there's so many to explore. You have to go out past the 10 minute video and go dig, or hopefully this will be at least me taking you out for a walk and just starting it, you know? And just getting on a path where maybe you get thirsty towards some more knowledge. So anyway, we're going to go over a couple today. First and foremost is a few that you know already. The very first one is Venuloma Enelar or Venuloma Enelar Pranayama. But we're going to talk necessarily the first one because people know it. It's easy to teach and it's incredibly settling. It's called Nadhi Sadhanha. 
or alternate nasal breathing. So first things first, let's sit upright. You can elevate your hips if you'd like, if that externally rotates those legs. Sit comfortably where the shoulders are back, ears are in line, but there's not a lot of contraction in the body, just a nice triangular foundation. Good, then you're gonna inhale the right hand. You're gonna take these first two fingers to the pad in front of the thumb. You're gonna sit up nice and tall and you're gonna close your right nostril. You're gonna inhale through the left. You're gonna close that nostril with your ring finger on the same hand and hold, kumbaka. And then you're gonna exhale through the right. Let's do that two times. Inhale right. Close and hold. Open left, exhale left. Inhale left. Close and hold. Open right, exhale right. One more round. Inhale right. Close and hold. Exhale up. Go to return to natural circles of breath. That is known as Nadhi Sadhana, alternate nasal breathing. Now, according to Iyengar, who I, uh, I, I can't ever reference and find more reverence than to anyone in yoga, um, he recommends very highly that you practice pranayama first thing in the morning on an empty belly and an empty bowel. If in fact that works for you, that's fine. But if in fact it does not work for you, it's still better to do it some other time than it is to do it not at all. So let's do that here. See Tali. Now, for, as we're coming into the summer season now, and you might be practicing more outside or on the beach, or you practice you know, warm levels of yoga or whatever, another breath that you could bring in, and it's very, very beneficial to hot yoga as well, is to go ahead, and it's called Sitali. It's a curling of the tongue. Now, we have, a, we have an obstacle here. With the, one of the, tra, the challenges of Sitali Pranayama is the rolling of the tongue. Some people genetically cannot do this. It looks like this. So silly as that looks, if you can't do that, you can roll it backward and you can draw through the teeth. But Sitali Pranayama, one of the benefits is, and one of the, the very first and prominent physical effects is a cooling effect. It chills your ass down. It cools your body, quite literally. And as you draw a breath across and through the tongue, air cools, systematically the inside of the body cools, externally cools, you settle. So, Sitali Pranayama will practice. Sit up nice and tall. Roll the tongue and extend it. Exhale, inhale. And then exhale. So you're going to draw a breath in, suck the tongue in, close the mouth, and exhale naturally. Ready? Let's do it again. Very good. So that's a fun one. You'll feel it across your tongue. It's cold right away. Even when the air is hot, it still comes across the tongue cold. It has a cooling effect. It has a calming effect. It's nice. It's a good one. All right. Now, conversely, here's one that's called bellows breath. This is known as kabalabhati or the fire breath. So the last one cooled your ass down. This one's going to cook you. So you got to boil the chickpea, as my Guruji Han Howard taught me. Boiling, boiling, boiling. We season, we season, we season. So here we go, Kabbalah is a constant exhalation of the bellowing of the breath. Right hand on the heart, left hand on the belly. You can trace both hands here, it doesn't matter to me. But it's not very easy. If in fact you shoot a booger at this, it's okay. No one's gonna judge. So you have to sit up nice and tall. You're gonna breathe in, and then you're going to exhale as you pull the navel towards the spine, engaging the low abdomen muscles, you pull in and you bellow like a fireplace bellow. And it's rapid, ready? You're going to continue to do that for a minute. And you're going to learn to develop those muscles more and more and more. It is an excellent exercise for the low abdomen. It's great for creating heat. Kabbalah Bhati, fire breath. Now, with that being said, it's a continuous exhalation. It's going to take some practice. If you don't have it down pat, don't sweat it. 
takes a little bit of time to do. It's a wonderful thing to do though, and you're gonna have a great time doing it and practice it. It's another one to play with. All right, and then we'll do a little brommery because it's fun. It's springtime and there's bees everywhere. Bees. So here you go. This is what goes on with brommery. It's buzzy bee. So you're gonna take the hands and you're gonna cover the eyes. You place them above, one over, maybe to the eyebrow, second one to here, third one to, oh, excuse me, you can place your middle finger to the edges of your nose, then the third one to the corners of your mouth. So what we're gonna do is close the eyes, nose, mouth, and we're gonna take the thumbs onto that little niblet here. What do they call this again? Something. And you're gonna close it. And when you go through it, you're gonna close the ears and you're gonna hear it now. You're gonna to wanna to practice this at home, so I'm glad we're doing this video because in class, if I ask you to do it, you're gonna be freakishly embarrassed and you're not gonna to wanna to make the noise and your ears are closed, so you try to do it too quiet. That's bullshit. You gotta be honest in your practice, so this is what we're gonna do. Closing the eyes and nose and then the ears, we're gonna buzz like a bee. So when you close these faculties, you're gonna breathe in. And then you're gonna say, ohm, and it's gonna create this wonderful, that 432, those hertz, the, that, that vibration in the body, but it sounds like a bee and you have to do it outwardly loud. Let's practice. You're gonna do that several times. So now, with the closing of the ears, the vibration in your head is enormous. It's this wonderful, wonderful vibration, and it massages the brains, man. It just settles the soul. It's such an energizing thing. Brahmari Pranayama is just straight fun. Straight fun. It's the party of the Pranayama, you know? Have a good time doing it. Create this vibration in your head. Let it rattle you around in your brains, and then it'll settle the sympathetic nervous system. It'll energize the brain. It's going to bring a ton of oxygenated blood up there, and you're going to have more conscious control. So that's it today, my friends. That was the pose of the day, the pose of the week, the pickles, little tidbit. Please reference Light on Yoga anytime you want, BKS Iyengar. It is the Bible, the anthem of all yoga. Take that, enjoy it, research it, have fun. Peace and light, y'all. Peace and light.